Maximizing your wealth and planning for a successful retirement, it's a complicated endeavor. Many uh, people have investments out there, financial products, maybe in your portfolio, don't even know what they are or actually how they work. So today, we're launching a five-part educational series with Omaha's retirement strategist, Daryl Bryant. Each week, Daryl will highlight one element of financial planning and break it down in a simple, straightforward way, starting with stocks and bonds. Daryl is one of the area's leading financial advisors. He hosts a weekly retirement radio show on Omaha that airs Saturday mornings on 1110 KFAB, and he helps folks in Omaha plan for retirement. Daryl, welcome back. Good morning. Good to see you, Daryl. I like this. We're kind of breaking it down into layman's terms. Yeah, there, I like right? it too. I like it too because there are so many people out there that don't understand what they own. You have some mm -hmm. stuff, you don't get it, you don't know how much risk you have or really how to describe what you own, which is a shame. Yeah. Because you kind of understand everything else you own, right? Right. And this is a really important thing. We're talking stocks and bonds today, right? Sure. You want to start with that? That's Let's the start difference. with the basics. Okay. What is the difference? So, stocks and bonds, here's the thing. And believe me, if you're a viewer out there and you think, who could not know that? The majority of viewers do not, could mm -hmm. not define stocks versus bonds. So, the, a stock and a bond are both ways that a company can raise revenue, right? So, Mike, let's say you and I are going to start a company. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not going to go to the bank and borrow the money necessarily. I mean, we, we need some real money, okay? We need some large, large dollars. So, you and I could either sell stock or we could issue bonds, okay? What does that mean? So now Kelly's out there and she says, well, you know, I got, I got 10 grand laying around. And I, I like you guys. I'd, I'd, I'd like to own part of your little company, okay? So we sell you a share of that company, okay, for 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, you're hoping the value of that does what? Goes up. Goes up. And at that time, you might sell it, okay? Mm -hmm. That would be a capital gain. Um, if it's a short-term capital gain, it would be a year or less of holding. Long-term capital gain be a year or more. Then, but Mike and I get to talk and we think, you know, we don't want it. We don't want her as part of our business. We just want to borrow the money. Mm -hmm. So you catch wind of that and you said, you know, I like you guys. I would be willing to loan you my money, right? Well, in this case, you'd be loaning us the money and we'd be issuing you a bond. So you would ask, well, what are you going to pay me? Well, we'll pay you 4%. How's that? For how long? For 10 years. Okay, so it's 10 years to maturity, right? Okay, so you're going to pay me, with my $10,000, you're going to pay me 400 bucks a month. Uh, per year for the next 10 years and then we're going to hand you your money back mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so it's just a couple of ways that a person that, that a company can raise money sometimes we as a company we do not want to have more owners mm -hmm. sometimes uh, we don't want to issue bonds okay yeah. and then you get into the value of those bonds whether now Mike and I have a small company let's say we're just a startup so we would we, we might call that a non-investment grade bond or a junk bond okay you get it so yeah. far yep well, yeah, I got to tell you, you're explaining it a lot better than Google does. Um, well, thanks. I'm serious. I was looking it up yesterday because it's something that or I don't Wikipedia, know much about. Wikipedia, right. This is, yep. Yeah, Wikipedia. I'm like really into this. I'm just yeah. here. But that, well, that's, that's, just a, that's just a stock versus a bond. Yeah. But as an investor, a stock is essentially an investment. You're investing mm -hmm. in it and you're owning part of that company. Whereas sure. a bond is, you're it, basically loaning money. You you're loaning money. money. You're acting yeah. like the bank. And so we call that a debt instrument, whereas stock is ownership. So we call that an equity because you have an equity position. Right. Okay, that's why we call stocks equities. Bonds are debt instruments. Okay. So in an ideal world, how much should we have of each? Great question. Balance, yeah. This is the problem. Um, generalities, which I don't like generalities, would be if you, um, let's say you're getting ready to retire and you're 60 years old, what you might consider is, which I would discourage, is we'll say the little formula of 100 minus my age. Okay, so if I'm 60, if I have a client that's 60 years old, that equation would mean he should have about 40% in stocks and 60% in bonds, okay? So, but th this is a problem today, isn't it? Because if I move him to 60% bonds in this low interest rate environment, if you, if you go ahead and loan us your money, back to the bond idea, Kelly, and we say we're gonna pay you 4%, and you hold that for a couple of years, and then the Fed raises rates a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And you say, gosh, I'd really like to get out of that, that bond. I, yeah. I, you know, I need that $10,000, I'm gonna have to sell it. So you go on the market and you try to sell it. Well, nobody's going to want to buy it, not for what you paid for it, because they can go out and get a 6% bond now, and yours is, well, I want your crummy little four. Mm -hmm. So if I were to use the generality, here's the problem. If I use the generality today, Mike, and I say, let's go 60% bonds in this low interest rate environment that we're in, where the mm -hmm. Fed has said they're going to raise rates, aren't I asking 
to lose my client's money? Isn't mm -hmm. that family going to lose money here over the next couple of years? You so really they better want to hold it to maturity if you're going to do that. You want to take a look at the climate out there, what's going on at that time. Absolutely. Um, stocks and bonds, um, any general mistakes people make when they look at stocks and bonds? What's the biggest mistake? Is, is well, most people, don't, yeah, most people don't know the difference between a preferred and a, and a common stock. Uh, they don't really know why they own what they're owning. Are they, are they seeking current dividends? Are we looking for some growth potential, et cetera? Um, the, the primary thing people, the mistake people make with stocks are they forget how volatile they can be, right? Stocks can move forward very rapidly and they can move south very rapidly. <coughs> and so if you own, if you, if you need dollars on a short term and you have something that volatile, Mike, then you could certainly find yourself in a precarious position because yeah. we have market declines. That's just when I needed my yeah. money. I was two years away from retirement. Why in the yep. world did I say, sure. why did my advisor tell me this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now what am I going to do? Or worse yet, I retired two years ago and then see a decline. Yeah, makes sense. Very, okay. very interesting. Well, now that we know how stocks and bonds work, what about mutual and index funds? What role should they play in our retirement portfolios? Our educational series continues next Wednesday with an in-depth look at those topics. Yeah, and if you're uh, nearing or if you're in retirement, would like to speak with Daryl and his team personally about your investments, Qualified viewers can set up a complimentary private wealth review by calling that number on the screen right there, 402-932-2141, or go to dbryantretirementstrategies.com. Well, thanks so much, Daryl. You bet. Makes sense. Very important. Yep, makes very more sense. Too. Yep, thanks for having yeah. me. Maybe you could work for Google and help them out. <laughs> Maybe I could write something or two. Yeah, you could. Oh, that's right. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>